Welcome to Humphreys of Henley TV, Countryside Concierge at its finest, and a fabulously warm welcome to Blenheim Palace, right here in the heart of the English countryside. Uh, we are having such a fabulous time here today, pootling through the rooms, seeing the magnificent state rooms, the long library and so on, and we can't wait to share it with you over the next few episodes. And welcome back to the beautiful grounds of Blenheim Palace. It really just gets better at every, at every available turn. What was quite interesting about the grounds at Blenheim is that they were designed and created at the same time as the building was going on, which had really quite an impact because they made the two work, work alongside each other. And the first Duke was a huge fan of the very elaborate and ornate style of, um, of gardens and grounds um, that was very much seen at that time. Probably the other best example is at the Palace of Versailles, which is also rather splendid, as, as uh, you probably know. So there were lots of um, really ornate touches that, um, that, that took place. The fourth Duke, along with um, many of his, his peers, then employed the services in the late um, 18th century of Lancelot Capability Brown. And you know, I've, I've talked lots about Capability Brown at the various houses that we've visited, and I've only just found out where he got his nickname from. And apparently, he said uh, to all of his clients, that he was going to realise the capability of their gardens. Isn't that glorious? So that's why he's called Lancelot Capability Brown. So he made lots of changes. And um, as we know, he really uses the landscape and the scenery to create a fabulous sort of sweeping, sweeping vista. And he was responsible for flooding uh, the lake um, to make use of um, Van Brew's bridge that was built. Um, so it really gave it a purpose which was very, which was unintended at the time of building the bridge. Um, and now the bridge spans this incredible lake. Um, and as you look down from the palace, it really is truly magnificent. The delights of the grounds just go on and on, and we're standing on the incredibly, wonderfully famous and beautiful bridge. And behind me, you might just recognise the tree with the big hole in it that uh, featured so heavily in Harry Potter. And also, because Blenheim is obviously um, a working estate, behind us also is the well that they, uh, from which they gather the water. Um, and you will find Blenheim, Blenheim water available um, in in many hotels and and shops and it's really fresh and really rather rather lovely and then over um, behind us which um, which you can see is the uh, column of victory and the first Duke of Marlborough is standing up there proud as punch in all of his military regalia celebrating that uh, famous battle of Blenheim so it's well worth giving yourself lots of time just to have a real wander through the grounds at every turn you'll see something new and something beautiful. Um, 007 apparently even was, was filmed here. So lots to recognise, but lots to just gaze and look at because it really is rather, rather beautiful. Now, if there's one thing I really recommend that you do when you visit this amazing place is make sure that you stop and look around you at every available turn because you never actually know what is behind you as well as, as in front of you. And here is a really good, um, good example. As you walk through the beautiful archways, if you get to this point and then look upwards, you'll see the incredible clock tower, which is just magnificent. And uh, back to the first Duke's days, you can see the lion Attach, attacking the French cock in um, uh, representation of his amazing victory at the Battle of Blenheim. I hope you've enjoyed the little insight to Blenheim Palace that we've so, so enjoyed sharing with you. But there's lots more to come, so we look forward to seeing you next week for the next episode.